When NASCAR fans talk about the NASCAR driver who's won the most championships in NASCAR history, they will almost always be talking about the three seven-time Cup Series champions, those being legends and Hall of Famers Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt, and Jimmy Johnson. Eight-time champions? Well, no driver has done it, but crew chief and cousin Richard Petty, Dale Inman, did, winning seven titles with the King and helping Terry Labonte garner the first of his two Cup Series crowns in 1984. Okay, what about nine? Was there a crew chief or car chief in the pioneer era who bounced around in pit boxes of legends in the 50s and 60s? No? Well, did anybody in the Xfinity or Truck Series win nine in those respective series infancies? No? Well, you're right. Nobody in NASCAR's top three series, driver or crew chief, has ever won nine titles. Rick Hendrick has as an owner, but that's a collective achievement between many drivers, not just one. Xfinity Series greats Sam Bard and Jack Ingram never came close, nor did Truck Series greats Ron Hornaday or Mike Skinner. The only man to do it never drove a race in the top three series of NASCAR. However, he won eight straight NASCAR championships and nine total in his respective series, and did it all driving the car I dub 61 Orange. Let's talk about Rome, New York's own Richie Evans, effectively known as the Rapid Roman. Richie Evans was born on July 23, 1941, and as a youngster, latched on to driving modified race cars from a young age, after a short stint in drag racing. When he drove modifieds, he normally drove cars that were only a year or two older than him, mostly pre-World War II Ford Coupes. After going to work in a local garage in New York at the young age of 16, his interest in auto racing peaked. The Utica Rome Speedway became his most frequent stop, but in 1965, he made his first start in NASCAR's premier modified series. In the last race of that 1965 season, he got his first win. However, Evans was different from the teams dominating NASCAR at the time. Even in those early days of NASCAR, still pre-modern era at this time, mind you, there were still some super teams to be had. Carl Kiefer was really the first multi-car team owner in NASCAR, boasting drivers such as the Flock Brothers. Lee Petty, Lee Petty basically had a racing company for himself and his son Richard, and before Evans had started his first feature race in the Modifieds, the father-son duo of Lee and Richard Petty had won four cup championships and two Daytona 500s between the two of them. But Evans, being a self-made man and racer, put in over 100 hours each week alone on his race car, which he also painted himself, using the shade of orange meant for a GMC truck. Rather than having a whole crew of guys to do the dirty work for him, Evans did it all by himself. Even when he started in NASCAR's premier modified series in the 1970s, the era of drivers working on their own cars was fading, as teams like Die Guard, Junior Johnson's team, and Richard Childress Racing started to pop up and take over the sport. In 1973, Evans finally made a bid, winning his first NASCAR Premier Modified Series Championship. After 1973, it seemed that he was in the clear for many more years of success, and while he was good, he wasn't quite great because of one on-track rival that threatened his possible reign of terror and wanted to start his own, Jerry Cook. Jerry Cook was the Richie Evans before Richie Evans' incredible championship streak. Cook, like Evans, was a self-made driver who incredibly built his first modified race car at 13. Just me? And you? Thinking about what we were doing at 13? Yeah, it wasn't building a race car. By ourselves. Also like Evans, he made the Utica Rome Speedway his playground, winning the track championship there in 1969. In 1971, as Richard Petty took home the Cup Series crown, Cook won his first modified series championship. In 1972, Cook and car owner Pete Harbrand repeated their 1971 success and won a second title. In 73, only Evans could disrupt the success, but in 1974, Cook won the title again. He never relinquished the title again for the next three seasons, winning the Modified Series title from 1975 to 1977, giving him four consecutive championships and six overall. But Evans wasn't just going to let Cook run rampant over the series. Instead, he decided to run rampant himself. 
after the off-season of 1977, he never looked back. Eight straight championships. Just think about that. Those gaudy numbers. Eight consecutive titles in a professional auto racing division in America. For eight seasons, five of those were legend Jerry Cook, a six-time champion in his own right, was still competing for the title. Richie Evans, B.R. DeWitt, and the GMC painted orange number 61 could not be beaten on the modified circuit. Evans also continued to win multiple track championships during this time, and it's estimated he won over 400 feature modified races in his career across various tracks all across the country. Though exact statistics weren't kept for a while in the modified series or other modified series that he raced in. Eight straight titles in any form of NASCAR racing for anybody, crew member, driver, crew chief, car chief, will likely never ever happen again. Evans was also great with fans with one of them quoting after Evans' death that like the king, Richard Petty, he never waved a fan off or neglected an opportunity to sign or interact with anybody. Evans, like Lee Petty, and many other pioneer drivers in the sport's early days, was racing to put food on the table, especially at the start. And it just so happened that like Lee Petty, Buck Baker, the Flock Brothers, and everybody else, he was a championship-caliber driver at his respective level. Over four Hundred wins, nine total championships. 1985 was the last of his eight consecutive, and his last championship overall. But unfortunately, the 1985 season for Evans would end in the most heartbreaking and tragic way possible. The day is October 24th, 1985. It's getting late in the NASCAR season for every division out there. And the modified circuit, along with the Bush series and the late models, are coming to Martinsville. Richie Evans practicing, getting ready for 500 total laps of racing in his racing weekend between the modified race, Bush series race, and late model race, all of which he was planning to run. Unfortunately, it all goes wrong in turn three. Richie Evans was just 44 years old when he passed away. His 1985 championship was awarded to him posthumously, but it wasn't a sympathy award. Incredibly, he had already locked up the title before the season was even over. Championship number nine was a touchy and emotional subject for NASCAR fans and a bittersweet moment for fans of Evans. His ninth championship had come, but at the cost of his life. And it hurt because they knew that he didn't get to see it completely through. Evans' legacy lives on today, with various tributes, paint schemes, moments, and awards all being dedicated to him. With possibly the best one of all, not even bearing his name, but in being with the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, is thriving. Drawing solid crowds, getting the races on cable TV, and garnering big talent from around the country. With former NASCAR stars and legends, including a champion in Bobby Labonte and Ryan Newman, set to drive in the series soon, later this season at Richmond, Evans was a trailblazer, a man that showed all it takes to achieve your goals is a lot of hard work. He, along with Jerry Cook, put the Modified Series on the map as not just a feeder series, but a marquee event to catch every time he went to the track. And that is why Richie Evans the Rapid Roman from Rome, New York, will forever be remembered as a legend and as NASCAR's only nine-time champion.